and we are live. Welcome, everybody. This is the JF Media Show, the J A E F Media Show. My name is Calvin Cavander, and I am your host for today. I'm excited for this show. We're beginning a brand new series. This is uh, this this new series is a continuation. is a is is a sequel to the last series we just did. Uh, this is uh, episode one. Uh, the last series that we just did, which was called Let There Be Light, in Him Was Light, and the Light, in Him Was Life, and the Life Was the Light of Man. So our new series is called Predestined Calling and Purpose. This is episode one of our Predestined Calling and Purpose series, and the subtitle is That the Scripture Might Be Fulfilled. That the Scripture might be fulfilled that's right in let there be light we discovered two lights one was an external light that god called out of darkness at the beginning of creation and the other was an internal light which is found in the life of jesus by virtue of the holy spirit now this second light is now the tangent the path that we're going to follow this light is very unique and accomplishes different things in us. One of the things this light does is that it breaks us free from the power of sin. Uh, it breaks us free from the power of darkness and translates us into the kingdom of light, the kingdom of his son. This light also sheds the love of God in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. This internal light now also purifies us and cleanses us from sin. Then it enlightens our path, which is the focus of this series, predestined calling and purpose, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But first, as I always like to begin off, how are you doing? How are you doing, my brother, my sister, my friend? How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. If not, I pray and trust that for whatever duration of this episode that you listen to, Holy Spirit, may you touch them and whatever is causing them heartache, whatever is causing you not to feel well, may the power of God move and touch you and change that situation. With faith, I believe. I also like to always start us off with a quick prayer because we are venturing out into spiritual terrain and who better than the Holy Ghost to lead us and usher us uh, on this journey as we go uh, on, on, on this, yeah, th this journey that we're about to take in this new series. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, I invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in here. Holy Spirit, take over this show, take over this atmosphere, attach yourself to these airwaves, and I pray that you also create uh, a canopy, a shield around whoever is listening, wherever you are right now, that our eyes will be open to see, our ears will be open to hear, and our hearts will be open to receive this engrafted word with meekness that is able to save our souls. We receive this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Please uh, bear with me. My voice is, is getting back on track. Let me just put it that way. Now back to what we're talking about. Our focus for this series is to understand how this, how this dimension of this internal light operates in us. How this dimension of this internal light that you and I are going to be following, the one that lights all men coming into the world, how we can follow it, how you and I can trust that it's telling us when it says go this way, you know, don't go to the left, don't go to the right, just stay on this path, or now turn. Is it dependable? Is it a dependable light? Well, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, we read 
that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, who, the Word, was in the beginning with God. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, a few verses farther down, it says, that was the true light. This is the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world. Which means that any man, when you're born, as you continue to advance in years, in age, there's one key ingredient that you need to sojourn through this thing called life. He's saying there's a true light that you need, which gives light to every man coming into the world. It's kind of like you're showing up at the airport or a certain country. They give you <clears throat> a visa, a stamp of approval. Now, they also give you a map to the city. That map is something that lights up your path for the next couple of days. They tell you, well, this is where your accommodation is going to be. This is where your hotel is. If you want food, if you want to rent a car, if you want to do this, if you want to, that becomes your map, your guide into a place you've never been. John is telling us here that this was the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world because the world is filled with darkness. So God has made a provision that any man coming into this world, um, they receive, they can have access to certain light that will guide you as you sojourn through this world of darkness. And we discovered, perhaps, in my, as, as I get more knowledge of this, we discovered that perhaps the first and most important light bulb every Christian, and if you're not a Christian, uh, this could be a, a solution to some of your problems, maybe a lot of your problems, that the most important light bulb that every Christian needs to turn on is finding themselves in Scripture. And learning how scripture not only talks to you, but about you. You see, there's two things here. Learning how scripture not only talks to you, <clears throat> but how it talks about you. That you can harness prophetic utterances from scripture without necessarily waiting for man of God or woman of God to come and say, Thus says the Lord. You, you're going to be these, you should be these. Those come as confirmations. So, how to harness prophetic addresses from Scripture? That is from the writings of the prophets, Isaiah and Malachi. You know, now that is all in the last series we just did, Let There Be Light. And we could have kept going and going, but we can always revisit that in the future. Right now, I want to touch on a different aspect of this of, of this subject called light, you know. Now, once we understand that scripture can be or is a light, to what extent can you and I rely on it? Can you and I bet the house on it? You know, Psalms one Psalms one nineteen one hundred five says that. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We are going to follow this light to see how it lights up our path. This is the trail that we're going to follow in this new series. Now, I know you've probably heard hundreds of teachings and read several books and topics like destiny, purpose driven life, and so I won't really be bothering you with much of that. Um, my angle is, is different, and I, I'm just adding uh, this whole thing of fulfilling our calling, purpose, and destiny, why are we here, uh, has many pieces to the puzzle. So this is just another piece to the puzzle. 
because I trust and I believe and I think you probably have a couple of pieces. So this is just another piece to the puzzle, okay? Um, there's a new perspective, unless this is not new to me, that I stumbled on as I was reading through the Gospel of John. A certain phrase started jumping off the pages. And so it just kept arresting me. So we started tracing it backwards. And it got stronger and stronger in my conscience every time I kept reading it. And this phrase was the phrase is the subtitle of a series that the scripture might be fulfilled. I mean, the more I kept reading it, the stronger it got to my conscience. Every time that I read it, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So I started look, reading in the neighborhood of, of this phrase and seeing that things were happening in the natural, physical matter was being transformed, changed, and altered. New governments and policies were being put in place, and all for the full, all because of this phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled. It, it, it is, that's this why I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you. You know, one of the scriptures says, kind of let us uh, discuss together. It's in, it's in Isaiah. I'm inviting you, you and I, to go on a journey. I don't know everything. But one of the things I do is that when I come across something and I say, I think there's something here, that's what I that's what I try to do. I I I invite you as well. I say, let's go on, let's go on this trail and let's find out. And I leave it all to the, I leave it all to the Holy Spirit. That's that's your approach you take. Is I want the Holy Spirit to enlighten us. And that means I have to make myself yielded as much as I can when I'm on here. Yes, this, like like some of this is on the script and stuff like that. But once we start joining into reading, there's going to be some pauses where you and I are going to have to ponder. You're going to have to think. But one of the things that I'm doing is I'm also intriguing your curiosity. Ah. I want you to start to go on this adventure as well. I want you to start looking into some of these things that bring to our attention. Okay? So if you've listened to the Let There Be Light series, we always, um, one of the things that, we, when we read scripture for the most part, we always read scripture for the context of Jesus only. But that changed for me at December 2022 when I was, I've shared this in, previous episodes, but it bears repeating, where I was in a place was like, God, I need a word, 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 I don't know what's going on. Right and the Lord said, he brought two scriptures to me. He was like, my goodness. The first one, he brought Hebrews 10, 7. He said, behold, I count. Behold. In the volume of the book, it is written of me, I come to do thy will, O God. And he was, that's also a quotation that was prophesied by David, I believe, in Psalms 42. Then when the Lord brought that to my attention, he quickly brought Galatians 2.20. It says, I'm crucified with Christ. I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who 
love me and give himself to me. Let me make sure to read it properly. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Yes, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. In that minute, those two scriptures match. Boom! Fireworks went off. And the Lord said, Calvin, scripture is not just written about Jesus. For as long as you are in Christ, you can also always find yourself in scripture. And someone might ask and say, Brother, I, I do, but is, how possible can this be? And again, bears repeating. Scripture is like the unarchitecture plan. Scripture, which I call the Word of God, is a plan of what is happening, of what exists in the spirit realm. This is a map. Scripture does not contain everything that exists in the spirit realm. However, Scripture is a mapping into the spirit realm. Even when you use your normal Google Maps, let's say, if you put in an address, Google Maps does not zoom in. I mean, Google Maps blinds out or blurs out some of the You know, some of the things or residences or buildings or, or on the map when you're looking at Google Maps. It tries to focus, get your attention to focus on what you only, the surroundings that are pretty much on your destination, you know, the, the route that it maps out for you. But you know, as you're driving and you, it's like, wow, I didn't know this was here. I didn't know this was here. I didn't know, wow, this is here. And those things, you may not see them on the actual Google Maps. They might even be there, but the way even Google Maps is designed, it blurs those out. It only zooms in to a certain, you know, setting. So, that's the same thing with Scripture. Scripture is like an architectural plan. That shows us what is possible in the spirit realm. So this word of God, when you read it, most these, these are just not words. I've said that before. They're words to us because that's how they transcribe to us to understand them. But these words are how, how can I put it? These these words are spirit and life. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So these words are living and they can take shape and speak about Jesus, but they can also take the same shape and speak about you. Because before they were written words, they were spirit, they were in spirit form. Before it was his word in written form, it was his word in spirit form. We 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 in fact mentioned that in uh this light that is coming in here. So which is what we're gonna be looking at uh shortly here. So I, I want you to receive that revelation as well, that these words are not just letterings or as, as you may see them, these words are spirit. There is a spirit of communication through these words. And you and I are to change our understanding that this is a map into the spirit realm to understand the workings <clears throat> in the spirit world. So the moment we understand that scripture is not only written about Jesus, but it's also written about us who are to come in the manner of Christ. 
as followers of Christ, engrafted in Christ. It changes a lot of things for us. It changes a lot of things for us. So once you realize that you too, behold, in this volume of the book, it is written of you. Because you have to understand, before the Bible was written, all your days were numbered out before the foundation of the world. And one of the reasons why the, the series is called Predestined, Calling, and Purpose is because many a times we, we talk about destiny. But another word that the scripture, you know, reading the book of Romans and other places, that the reason it puts it that way, it always talks about predestined. Because predestined means thought out means a destiny that is predestined. Predestined is a destiny that is predestined, if that makes sense. Everything is laid out before the journey begins. The map is laid out. So it's so scripture is then written in that light, in that context. In the context that um, with, with the Holy Spirit having this foreknowledge that not only Christ, Jesus Christ, but also us who are going to be in Christ, who are going to be engrafted into Christ. So all of us, scripture is written about us if we enter in Christ. Okay. Now. What we're going to be doing is a chronological study through the through the book of John of where we find this phrase specifically that the scripture might be fulfilled. And you're going to be astounded at how much activity was going on around this phrase. Now, I chose the book of John. Um, we can find... Um, we can find it in the book of Matthew. We can find the book of Luke in the other Gospels. So we'll, we'll just use, we'll start with the book of John. And we can also expound using uh, the book of Matthew and all of this. Now, once you understand how much authority scripture and, and fulfillment of scripture has, you will no longer be swayed to and fro by certain wings. Your faith will not be wavering every time something around you is happening. You know why Jesus could sleep on the boat in the middle of the storm? Many a time, you also read in scripture that they would try to hurt Jesus, they would try to kill him, but they couldn't before his time. So his death happened, could only happen at the fulfillment, his death and resurrection could only happen at the moment that scripture would have to be fulfilled. But Jesus would not be scared. Jesus had no reason to worry. He had no reason to walk around with anxiety. Because anything that was happening to him then was no. And he knew how he would die. So he knew he would be crucified. So Jesus will not be scared about a storm taking him out because that was not in the plan. So this confidence of faith that you and I can master when we understand this. And again, the goal of this series is I don't want you Many Christians only read the Bible for the context of Jesus. Most of our understanding of the scripture in the Bible is everything only relates to Jesus. We never find ourselves in scripture. And, and that, that is what I want to help out with in this series is now that you have learned again from our previous series 
that you can find yourselves in the prophetic scriptures, the learning how scripture talks not just to you, but about you. Then now the next step, I believe, is for us to build the deepest possible roots um, because Jesus said that a wise man is he who builds his house on the rock. So the winds come, the waves, the floods, the winds and the rains, they beat up on it and they don't take that house down. That is what you and I need to cultivate. That is what you and I are going to be walking into. That's what you and I are going to be learning and studying is building deep roots anchored in this phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled so that when Satan comes knocking, you say, no, 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 no. This is not what is written. What is written is this. The scripture has to be fulfilled. The scripture can't be broken. So, let us now review some context scriptures. And it should be fun. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Again, we keep seeing this phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled over and over again. And in tracing back, so I'm going to first give us context of this phrase before we now systematically track it down in the Gospel of John. I'll just read some scriptures and you'll see that there's something that you and I need to pay close attention to. Now, there's an understanding that you and I need to first have, which is also when you read in the, in the, in the Bible, when it says, according to what was written in his word, when I started to say, okay, according to what was written in his word, I was like, Lord, this is still not getting me there. Until the Holy Spirit made me realize, according to what was written in the spirit of his word and not in the letter of his word. It's beyond the letter of his word. Again, this here is the written word of God. But there's, there's a written physical word of God, which is what we read. But there's also a written spiritual word of God. I was like, oh, now that changes things. When you read phrases now, like, according to what is written, I want you to append written where? In the spirit of his word. Because Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. Not the letter of his word. Again, because this, remember we read in, in, in John chapter 1, where it says, um, it says, because that which was from the beginning was his word in spirit form. This word that you and I are reading right now, this is a copy of what was actually written in the spirit realm. I know, you need to start looking at it like that. Because that which was from the beginning, as, as the scripture itself says, was his word in spirit form. Because the scripture says God is spirit. It says the words that I speak to you, they're spirit and their life. So what was written, what, what, is, what we read in the Bible text here is a transcript of what was written in the spirit before the foundation of the world. There's nothing that is happening under the sun that God does not know already. Everything has a record in the spirit of his word. And now 
which also gives me different understanding to scripture that we often read called uh, the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. So when you read the Bible, when you read the word of God, look for the spirit. The spirit in the word is what gives you life. The letter kills. That's why an atheist can read these things and memorize them and crown them and know them and not have these words impact them because they have stopped at the lettering of the word. They have not gone inside into the spirit of the word. The Holy Spirit has not given them access. Do you see what I mean? So, let's introduce some context scriptures and then this will get us warmed up. And then off we go to our journey in the book of John. Now, here's another let me see. These these passages of scripture are very interesting if you read them. So I want you to ponder. Let's take one from Second Corinthians chapter four, verse thirteen to fifteen. It says and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus Christ will raise us up with Jesus and will present us to you. For all things are for your sex and grace, having spread through many, May cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So, here he's saying, we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. Hmm. He says, we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. So you think about it. Let me thank you, Holy Ghost. According to what is written. I know we, we are reading it according to what is written. I want us to ascend beyond what is written textually. Why? Because he's saying we have the same spirit of faith. He's saying spirit of faith according to what is written. Now, remember um, in Hebrews and you know, you know, we, 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 so we're baking a cake here. I'm leaning on the Holy Ghost to bring different uh, ingredients for us. So if you hear me pausing and keeping quiet, you know why. And maybe in those moments I will play a uh, background tune or something. Anyway. So. Do you remember in Hebrews, it says, faith is the substance of things not seen? I want to show you that the spirit of faith can only work not according to what is written here textually, but according to what is written in the Spirit. Hebrews 11. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I like to read it as faith gives substance to things we hope for. Faith is evidence of things that are not seen. 
the things that we cannot perceive with our senses. So if we can't perceive them in our senses, where are they? They exist somewhere in the spirit realm. So your spirit of faith is according to what is written in the spirit realm. Because that's what faith pulls. Faith sees what has been written in the spirit realm. And this word of God gives you hope of what is seen, of what you cannot see. It gives you hope to place an order of what God's kingdom, of what exists in God's kingdom. And then the spirit of faith gives our hope substance. It makes it come to pass, to be. But now we're no longer reading these scriptures according to what is written, just literally. But I'm inviting you to ascend your thinking to according what is according to what is written in the spirit realm, in the spirit of his word. It says we have the same spirit of faith according to something that is written. Where? In the spirit realm. Which which textual scripture maps out for us? Because the spirit of faith operates in a realm, it's, it's in the spirit realm. That's where it pulls things from. So if it's pulling things from there, that means it operates according to what is written from where it pulls things from. I don't know if you get it. You see, you see it? Okay. So he's saying he, we believe and therefore we speak, but we are believing according to what is written. And that inspires our spirit of faith. Okay. Let's go to another one. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4 says, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, this, this, this is where it's getting really interesting. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Which means the power of God and all the battles that Jesus had to deal with could not go beyond the third day. He says he died. I, I was just asking myself. And I want you to start being inquisitive when you read scripture. I was asking myself, why didn't he why 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 didn't he just write, For I delivered to you first of all that which I received that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried. And rose again the third day. That's that's fine. He, he's telling you, death and uh, the death and resurrection of Christ was. But why does why did why does he need to add? Why does the Holy Ghost need to emphasize this aspect of according to the Scriptures? So. In the previous episode, I believe I mentioned that scripture lays the train tracks. And then physical manifestation is the train that comes following the train tracks. Scripture lays the train tracks. So if scripture had not prophesied that Christ would die, it wouldn't happen. But there was bounds that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It was specific. That was the blueprint. That was the blueprint. Again, think an architect. Builders, a constructor. The contractor builds according to the plan the architect gave him. In my heart. The Contractor follows the blueprint, what was written. So, keep the phrase. It says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 
Now, according to what was written in the spirit realm. That's how I want you to read it. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to 21 says, For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Verse 18. And when we heard this voice we came, which came from heaven, when we were with him on the holy mount, and so, and we had this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Okay. And so, he's telling you, we had something happen in the natural. But don't take your word, don't take our word for it. He says, we have a sure word of prophecy. He says, we, verse 19, we have a sure word of prophecy. We have the prophetic word confirmed. Which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. The Holy Spirit <clears throat> is exhorting you and I, saying that we do well to heed to the sure word of prophecy about our lives, our calling, our purpose, our destiny, as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in our hearts. Wow. Then it goes on to say that, listen to that. Peter is saying, the Apostle Peter. Peter is saying, um, that we have a more sure word of prophecy. Prophetic utterances that you and I can pull from scripture are a more sure foundation for you and I to build on. It says, Where unto you do well if you take heed as unto a light, which is what we're talking about. Then it says, Knowing this first. That no prophecy of scripture, no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Do you see how you see spirit attached to all of these things? We, according to the same spirit of faith, we, having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written. The spirit of faith, written where? The spirit of all. The spirit of his word. Now it's saying, prophecy did not come by the will of man. It says, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit who knows all things. The Holy Spirit is in charge of the spiritual domain. And he was the one telling them, this is what is written here. Transcribe it. It's interesting. Again, I'm just building ground and surety so that you can have the confidence that you and I can rely on scripture. It's going to be fun. Psalms 119 verse 89 says, Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances. My goodness, for all are your servants. It says, Forever, O oh Lord, your word is, is settled in heaven. Which word is he talking about? Talk about the spirit of his word. 
And the spirit form of his word is settled in heaven. It says, your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances, for all are your servants. Another translation reads, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, standing firm and unchangeable. This is an amplifier. This is Psalms 119, 119, verses 89 to 91. This is Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, standing firm and unchangeable. Your faithfulness continues from generation to generation. You have established the earth and it stands securely. Your word is settled in heaven, standing from and unchangeable. You have established the earth and it stands securely. They continue this day according to your ordinances. For all things, all parts of the universe are your servants. Wow. They continue this day according to your ordinances. For all things, all parts of the universe are your servants. Okay. But do you see what he's saying? Your word is forever settled in heaven. Starting from an unchangeable. The word of his spirit. Or the spirit of his word. Yeah, the word of his spirit. The spirit form of his word. Not just the textual, but the spirit form of his word. Now, Psalms 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You see, here he says it's forever settled. It says here, it's forever your word, O Lord, is settled in heaven. And now he's saying, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path which is the journey that you and I are going to be going on. How to harness the power of this word as a light to our path. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, this is the part that, listen to this part that is coming up, and upholding all things by the word of his power, upholding all things by the word of his power, he upholds all things by the word of his power. It says, when he had by himself part of our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, notice something here. It says, upholding all things by the word of his power. Again, notice how this is written. You know, you and I would have written it. He upholds all things by the power of his word. Or by his power. But he's telling you what's the precursor. He's saying by the word of his power. And many times when you read through scripture, you will see that scripture uses this type of uh, expression you know first we'll go power or power of his word but scripture says word of his power word of his son word of his righteousness word of his love word of his mercy you see it puts the phrase word before the other attributes because it wants us to know.
Yes, this is our introduction. Some things for us to think about. And I believe in the next episode, you and I can take off from there. Word of his power. Is there anything else, Holy Ghost, that you want me to add? So in the next episode, we will set journeying through John and look at different scriptures and our phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled. So, you know, uh, I'll let you see more on that. And we shall have ample scriptures to look at and see what's happening within the neighborhood of the phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled. It is something once you start to see it I can't explain how your faith will just get deeper. Do you know what it means, let's say, if you're in a car? Or you're in a plane or something like that. And something is happening to the, the outside. And everyone's freaking out. It looks like the plane's going to crash. He said, no. This is not what is written of me. This is not how I'm going out. When you speak, thank you, Holy Ghost. When natural circumstances start talking to you, they're also talking to you in like a, in a spirit manner. When things are falling around you, or it looks like all hell is breaking loose. It's a spiritual transmission. And the reason as to why you can counter Okay, you, let, let's speak to this. You, you, you and I, we, we see what is happening in the natural. Now, by the spirit of faith, by the word of God, we can discern what could be happening in the spirit realm, right? But uh, listen, listen, let me give you an example. This is an illustration. If you and I get a hold of this knowledge and understand that these transactions are happening in the spirit realm before they manifest in the natural. And when I speak, if I speak from the natural realm versus speaking from the spirit realm, is a very big difference. If I speak with understanding from the spirit realm, the reason I can say it is not yet this storm, a storm trying to show up in my life. I'm on a boat. The storm is trying to take me out. I'm on a plane. And nurture circumstances happen, it's been stirred up, that could take down a plane. 
the force of faith. When Jesus uh, was was on the boat, it was very interesting. <laughs> I was thinking we'll close the episode as we started here. Holy Spirit, do you have anything else to say? Uh, I'll show you two examples here. I'll show you two transactions that happened in the spirit realm. So, in Luke chapter 8, we have something interesting that happened. Verse 22. It says, the winds and waves obeyed Jesus. Now, it happened on a, on, a, on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came, came down on the lake, and they were, they were filling with water. And were in jeopardy. And they came to him. And awoke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the, the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled saying to one another, Who can this be? For he even commands even the winds and water. And they obey him. Why, why is it that he can command even the winds, the water, and they obey him? And Jesus tied the whole situation that was happening. He, he summed up that the only solution to whatever was happening is he asked him, where is your faith? So everything that was happening, Jesus said, this is happening. And he said, where is your faith? Now, I believe maybe in Mark, he says, he told them, um, yes, let us, let us go there and I'll, and I'll show you something and then, and then you know that I can. You said different lettering of that word. Mark chapter five. On that same day, no, Mark chapter four, verse 35. On that same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side, okay? Now, when they had left, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And, an, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already feeling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Jesus' authority, his spirit of faith, was not operating in the natural. Jesus was speaking from the point of view of the spirit realm. He says, Jesus said, I Jesus knew I cannot die. The boat capsizing cannot be my reason. That's not what the scripture has said. So if I speak and I say, peace, be still, the spirit behind that transaction that is trying to take me out in the natural knows that I know of another spirit called peace be still, which is anchored on me knowing what is written about me in the volume of the book. So this other spirit has to pull back because a stronger 
authority has spoken. I don't know. I don't know if you. I don't know if you're catching that. Jesus said, "Let us cross over to the other side of the lake." A storm starts up. Now, if you really want to be, um, really looking to why the storm started out, you really have to see what happened when they crossed over to the other side. That is where they found the madman of Gadara, the man who had seven legions of demons in him. Because in verse 26, it says, Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. And, he, and when he stepped out of the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in the house, but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice and say, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man when it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bounds, and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because, we, because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. That's under the world. The reason why Jesus could speak to the storm is anchored on so many things. What was written about him? Jesus knew a boat, a storm cannot be how I die. It has been written that I will die through crucifixion. So if any utterance that I speak to this storm and I say, be still, it has to stop because I'm speaking from a high authority of it is written. Because two spirits are communicating at that time. The spirit that has stirred up the storm. And I believe that spirit was actually, that storm was stirred up by Satan because Jesus was going, over to, he healed this man. This man was tormented by a legion. He's close to 3,000 demons in one man. This guy, they say that they, he could not be bound. They tried binding him with chains and fetters, and he would always break them off. The guy was staying out in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. Satan did not want this guy to be delivered, so he sent a counterattack. He knew Jesus was coming. Jesus knew. Jesus would walk in uh, uh, the gift of uh, word, word of knowledge and word of wisdom a lot. To very discerning. So Jesus knows what's happening in the spirit. So when he speaks in the natural, he's speaking not from the natural. He's speaking actually from the spirit. That's where, that's, that's where he's postured. That's where he's speaking from. So in the natural, he can say, peace, be still, and the storm stops. He summarized everything up by saying, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Everything that Jesus was dealing with in his life was because the reason he could overcome is because he knew the final ending of what the scripture said about him. So, he had to obey. And that's the surety that I want to bring to us is that when you and I are going through different things, that knowing that it is written for as long as I, am, I obey and serve. I'm willing, to, I'm willing and obedient. As long as I'm walking in certain scriptural dynamics or footprints. That's the word. Thank you, Holy Ghost. As long as I'm walking in certain scriptural footprints about me, Satan has no power over you. He doesn't. He doesn't. 
So you and I can stand on this understanding and speak to the storm and say, peace, be still. And someone else will be amazed and say, wow, what manner of person is this that even the waves and the winds obey him? And you can also turn to them and say, where is your faith? So, I hope that blesses you. I hope that blesses you. I hope that blesses you. Now, of course, even when it was written of Jesus that he had, that he would die and he has to resurrect, of course, you still have to naturally go through those emotions. But it gives you a different confidence to go through what you're going through, to deal with what you're dealing with. Because you have this anchor of understanding. Anyways. Anyways, 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 anyways. I'll quickly just pray for us and close this out. There's, there's, there's some things for us to think about and pray for me as much as I, uh, you know, that the Holy Spirit will reveal to us um, the things that we need to know about this phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled. So there are things going on in your life right now that have to turn around, that you can use faith to speak to certain storms, and they must turn around because the scripture must be fulfilled. So, I'll leave you with that. Maybe also as an anchor, as something first to quickly pray over. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So, why did Jesus have so much faith? Well, why did you just have faith to do the things you did? He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm doing what the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to do. To preach the gospel to the poor. To heal the brokenhearted. Proclaim liberty to the captives. Recovery of sight to the blind. And set up liberty to those who are oppressed. So, Father, on the faith of this word, we pray, Lord, that right now, to thank you, for speaking to us in this episode and Lord I just pray that you'll touch me and my friends that right now your spirit as we journey through this understanding of how the scripture that the scripture might be fulfilled that you and I will receive this understanding our faith will be anchored upon it um, in the name of Jesus you that your Holy Spirit will bring this, this surety into our hearts that fear not little flock. It is your Father's will to give you the kingdom. That we can rebuke the spirit of fear. We can speak to the storms in our lives because there is something that is written about us that must be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. That the Holy Spirit, me and my friends here, and listening, we will all learn how to now start walking in the footprint of what has been written about us in the volume of the book. So, Father, just as your word was present to heal when you were teaching about the glad tidings of the gospel, the kingdom of God, I trust that the faith and power is present to heal right now. And so, I stretch forth my hand in faith and speak into whoever is listening. Uh, whatever it is right now, the power of God is present to heal and touch and move. So if it is physical healing from the bottom of your feet to the crown of your head, may you receive the healing touch of God. May the balm of Gilead, may the anointing that breaks yokes and remove all burdens, 
break the yoke of any sickness, any pain in your body that you're dealing with in the name of Jesus. May the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Hallelujah. Lord, may you show yourself strong in my sister's heart. On behalf of my sister, whose heart has been postured and set to be perfect towards you, towards the job opening, may you move, O Lord. May you move immediately. Let her receive a phone call. Yeah, someone that is, you probably listen to, you, you listen to this, I, I don't know, just seeing this vision and you have a hard posture of you're a bit certain about this job. So I pray that the power of God will show himself strong on your behalf. You'll receive a phone call this week in the name of Jesus. Um, peace of mind. Peace of heart. Peace, peace, peace. Let peace flow into your heart right now. Let's, let's heal and touch your memory, your conscious, your body, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. May the healing balm of healing flow and touch you right now. May you receive the wisdom that you need to grow your business. I know you have a heart and you want to use your business as a way not just to uplift yourself, but your community, but you want to support the kingdom of God. So may the Lord shine his face towards you in the name of Jesus. And if you listen to this and all of this doesn't make sense, it's because you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Spirit of God. You need to invite Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus, into your heart to make you one of His. And then He'll give you access to the things you're studying about, reading about. They don't make sense to the natural mind. God is not logic. God is not a mind. God is a Spirit. You cannot understand spiritual things through a lens of logic. You need a spiritual womb, a spiritual heart, a spiritual mind to start understanding spiritual things. And the only way you can receive it is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior into your heart. And then once he comes in, you have access. So I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that you will be broken free and out of the kingdom of darkness. May you be translated into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we receive all by faith, in the name of Jesus. Amen. As always, our uh, closing benediction for us. So today, this is what we have. Finally, brethren, farewell. Become complete, to be of good comfort, to be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you always. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope, I hope this blessed you. I hope you had a, I hope this is stirring up some things in you. Your host for the show episode was Calvin Kabanda. We hope this episode blessed your heart. Grace, mercy, peace be multiplied unto you. May the Lord bless you and keep you from the evil one. Thank you for tuning in. See you on the next episode. Thank you and goodbye.